Hello everyone. Uh, in this particular video, we are going to look at uh, M2M, uh, machine to machine, uh, machine type communications, MTC, and Internet of Things, IoT. Let's start with the basic high level architecture of uh, M2M or IoT. So, what exactly is machine to machine and IoT? We will uh, have a look later uh, in this presentation. Uh, but let's start with this uh, simple schematic. So you have a sensor or a machine or a thing, right? Uh, and that is connected uh, to a base station. Now I've just called it a base station, but it could be anything. It could be something like a, a Wi-Fi router or it could be any particular wireless technology base station. So I've just given a generic name base station. And so you have a connectivity between the sensor machine thing and the base station. Uh, and the flow of data is generally from the sensor uh, to the base station. Uh, you can also have some flow of data from the base station to the uh, to the sensor, uh, spe specifically like you know if it's something uh, to do with the configuration and things like that. And you can also have uh, control information and software updates uh, which can flow uh, from uh, base station to the sensor. But this is not always possible. So the base station is connected via a backhaul uh, to the core network or a, a network server. And this uh, core network or network server is connected to the outside world, to the internet. Now, this is not an accurate representation, but it, this is just a brief schematic. Uh, I just wanted to explain uh, to show how the connectivity actually works. So to give an idea of uh, what sensors are there in your smartphones, uh, so you have uh, many, uh, many sensors and actually uh, the number of sensors are different in different uh, smartphones which you have. Uh, smartphones, well I say smartphones but it could be the other devices like uh, uh, tablets or phablets or anything. So depending on how expensive they are, they might have uh, more uh, sensors in them. So a typical smartphone would have something like a gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer, barometer, right? You can have like uh, the positioning for GPS, GLONASS, Galileo. Uh, you have NFC, uh, near field communications, right? You can also have like a fingerprint sensor, heartbeat monitor, right? Especially all these uh, smartwatches which are coming, they have heartbeat monitor. So you have lots of different kinds of sensor in your device. And if, if you try and map how the connectivity work is the is the phone or is the device that actually connects to the base station in this particular case so these sensors actually work via our smartphones to connect to the base station if you look at an example of a, a car one of those modern cars right it doesn't necessarily have to be a autonomous or a connected car uh, but there are already many different kind of sensors in our cars. Uh, so like, you know, you have these uh, uh, new cars which are coming with the drowsiness sensors uh, and uh, they are coming up with this uh, uh, anti, uh, the anti-accident sensors and lane departure uh, uh, sensors and night vision sensors. So you have uh, the cars which are again uh, have a lot of different kind of sensors. Now, if you want these sensors to connect, to send this information to uh, some kind of a server, uh, the, then this car will have to become like a connected car. And one of the su su surprising things I came across, uh, well, it's some time back, but uh, it was about these wind turbines. So I didn't realize that the wind turbines uh, have a lot of different kind of sensors. And when these wind turbines are actually uh, remotely uh, situated in, in the sea, like you know, there's uh, the wind farms which are generating electricity. Uh, so one of these uh, wind turbines would also have a satellite uh, connection. So the other wind turbines would actually relay their information to this particular wind turbine, which would send this information up uh, to the server via a satellite link. So uh, typically these wind turbines have uh, things like accelerometer, temperature sensor, right, and uh, transformers, and uh, many different other kind of sensors. So some of these sensors are shown here. 
So what exactly is machine to machine? Uh, a simple way of describing machine to machine is basically uh, connectivity uh, is uh, uh, exchange of information from one machine to another. So this exchange of information is not from one machine to another machine. It's from machines to other machines or uh, that's why you know the term machine to machine is not really accurate. It should be machines to machines. And this is one of the reasons why 3GPP actually uh, refers to this M2M in the specifications as MTC, Machine Type Communications. And 3GPP started using this MTC from release 10 onwards. So you would actually find MTC reference from release 10 onwards. Uh, now, while 3GPP is defining uh, what they call as the NB-IoT or narrowband IoT, it's still M2M or uh, machine type communications. Uh, one of the use cases for 5G is a uh, massive machine type communication. The requirement uh, there is to be able to handle 1 million devices per square kilometer. So how is, so how is M2M different from IoT? Uh, while in M2M, uh, basically, the connectivity, uh, the connection uh, happens between uh, machines, a group of machines to another group of machines. In Internet of Things, the machines actually communicate to a cloud server. And the other machines which actually need that information would pull this information from the cloud server or would be pushed information from the cloud into these machines. So uh, in case of Internet of Things, actually it's much more than M2M. Right? We are going to look at a lot more uh, of this uh, information in detail later on. A simpler definition for IoT is uh, IoT is combining data, cloud, connectivity analytics and technology in a way that enables a smart environment in which everyday objects are embedded with network connectivity in order to improve functionality and interaction. This is another way uh, to look at IoT, but this is more from perspective of uh, uh, IT. So here, as you can see, uh, the there are four stage of IoT solutions architecture. The first stage are actually the sensors and the actuators. The second stage is uh, internal internet gateways and data acquisition systems. Uh, the stage three is edge IT for analytics and pre-processing. And the final stage is the data center and cloud for analytics management, uh, analytics management and archive. So this is just another way of showing uh, IoT, but from non-cellular perspective. This is uh, uh, something which I came across uh, very recently uh, from 5G America's white paper and it basically shows uh, uh, how M2M evolves into IoT. We will look at uh, another definition after an example later on, but I, I like this particular slide as well. So uh, it's basically it talks about M2M which is like focused on uh, business to business, vertical use cases, uh, complex and proprietary and limited big data applications, but uh, it evolves uh, to smart environment and then Internet of Things. And when it is uh, evolves to Internet of Things, uh, M2M is referred to as phase one of IoT. Uh, and it basically allows business to consumer and business to business to consumer. Uh, horizontal and consumer devices, it's open and standardized, uh, big data uh, to of course cover uh, uncover critical new insights uh, and it enables new business models. So this is uh, just uh, a, a simple way to show how M2M evolves into IoT. So let's take an example to basically understand exactly what's the difference between M2M and IoT. Uh, and uh, I've used these examples in the past. So if you have already heard uh, about this example, then uh, you may want to skip uh, skip this now. Uh, so let's assume that we have this coffee machine. So 
you know it's it's just a generic coffee machine right which can also give you like a hot chocolate and uh, you know other other typical drinks which come along with the coffee machine uh, it's a five floor building and there are there is one machine uh, on each floor so there are five machines in total so in scenario one uh, there is no connectivity so all these machines have absolutely no connectivity so what it requires is someone uh, to go and manually check on each floor whether there are enough coffee beans uh, chocolate powder milk powder etc and uh, this would have to be done say three four times a day right because you don't want uh, people complaining that hey uh, the coffee machine on my floor has run out of uh, i don't know milk powder or like a coffee or something so let's say now uh, this one is a bit an evolution of the previous version so this has some basic connectivity right uh, this is uh, an example of m2m so the machine now has uh, basic sensors and it can send some kind of notification so you can get a notification on your phone or email or sms or like you know whatsapp message or whatever uh, so whenever uh, you can define a certain threshold so whenever the coffee beans or a chocolate powder or a milk powder falls below a certain threshold uh, you can get some kind of a notification so rather than a person going to have to go and look at these machines to see whether there are there is enough uh, chocolate powder coffee beans etc the machine will notify and this is uh, what you can say a basic uh, m2m example okay and uh, you can also have an app or whatever <clears throat> let's evolve this uh, even further so we can say this has advanced connectivity um, so let's say this coffee machine is now connected to the office system and uh, uh, the office database right uh, which is probably owned by hr so it knows which employees come at what time generally right and what is their uh, what is typically their uh, drink consumption pattern or like what kind of coffee do they like etc so this way the machines can optimize when it needs to be topped up so like say in the evening even though the machines may be half full it knows that actually a lot of people generally turn up at eight o'clock in the morning so it needs to be topped up in the evening itself rather than waiting to be topped up in the morning because what happens is when a lot of people turn up in the morning the machines run out of uh, i don't know coffee beans or milk powder or tea powder or something so th the machine can optimize when it needs to be topped up and if suppose there is going to be a large meeting or event uh, then the coffee machine can even check uh, when are the breaks and you know it it can uh, indicate in advance that it needs topping up so this is an example of iot right which is basically much more than the previous case so in the previous case uh, well, the m2m case we were only interested in a, the, basically we had connectivity and we had content in this case you can say that uh, we have uh, cloud we have context we have collaboration so it's lot more than a basic m2m now you can also evolve this example even further uh, so uh, you know it also knows about inventory so how much coffee beans chocolate powder milk powder etc is in the stock and when does it need to be ordered again so it needs it knows uh, it can know this information in advance right and it can also have an employee user interface that can actually get feedback uh, from the employees on to which particular coffee beans are more popular less popular and what kinds of drink are popular so you know it can basically say like oh this particular drink uh, nobody likes this particular drink so let's try and get some new kind of drinks or this particular coffee beans got uh, five out of five ratings so let's order this but if there is another coffee beans which got four out of five so and it's much cheaper then maybe i should actually get that one so a lot of artificial intelligence you can say 
so yeah so as i said this information can be used by machines to order the supplies taking into account price availability etc and uh, people can actually uh, or uh, you know others can build their own apps you know the apis could be available and maybe uh, you know in future so in this particular scenario the humans are only responsible for uh, cleaning topping it up etc so maybe in future uh, humans could be replaced by robots and everything could be automated so as we just discussed uh, you know the difference real difference uh, uh, simple way to put it is uh, between m2m and iot is the current m2m is all about connectivity and content right so connectivity which is a connection for machines and content which is a lot of uh, massive raw data uh, from things uh, so it's uh, in the in our coffee machine example is the notification that comes to humans and the humans decide what to do with it uh, when you evolve to iot uh, then you have cloud so you can uh, actually create services based on that uh, you have context so like we looked at uh, the context of design uh, there could be collaboration and there could be cognition so this is a slide uh, which i came across from interdigital and i really like it so i've used it in uh, many different presentations so this is a simple way to say uh, you know the way m2m evolves into iot so i hope uh, you actually liked uh, this uh, simple uh, uh, simple video and you agree with uh, the way i described the difference between m2m and iot uh, if you have any other uh, views or if you have your own opinions i'm very happy to hear about them uh, just please feel free to actually leave uh, your thoughts in the comment section and i'll gladly read it and reply to uh, whatever your queries might be or whatever your comments are thank you